dealership personnel and agency partners. This is Nick at 22 Squared. I hope this finds you well in this challenging time that we're in. Over the last week or so, our team in the field has tried the best we can to be proactive on your behalf. Uh, we've had constant communications with many of the agencies that you work with to help provide and strategy and best practices around messaging and media allocation. Uh, we've also put out um, a few different documents uh, through our district managers and have been in constant contact with them. Please know that if you have specific questions or concerns, there is no better time than today, tomorrow, any time to text us, call us, or email us. We are, without a doubt, at your disposal to help you in any way we possibly can. In the short term, we put together another best practice that we wanted to share with you today. Um, it speaks to messaging and, more importantly, the mediums that we need to employ with those messaging tactics. Uh, I'll go through it quickly. It's a document that will be linked to this video as well as available through the 22 Squared Field Reps and your district managers. Again, please let us know if you have any questions. Our messaging priority for the next couple, couple days or coming weeks uh, need to be focused on a few key uh, talking points. The first without a doubt, um, needs to be considering the questions and concerns that your customers are asking today. Uh, many of that is not going to be sales related, unfortunately for us, um, but it's going to bring a lot of value to your customers and build goodwill for future months, sales events, and opportunities in the future. Um, priority number one is absolutely speaking about our community, um, the things that our customers should be aware of, from health and safety tips that others are pushing out, um, talking about the things that um, we are doing in the community or opportunities for our customers to take advantage within the community. And then without a doubt, you know, letting customers know that we are part of the community, how many years you've been in business, the amount of employees that you provide. In many cases, you guys are the largest business in town or one of the largest employers in town. And it's a really important that your employees um, you know, make sure that their friends and family know that they're a part of the community and your business is involved in helping. But more importantly, that, you know, your customers understand that you care and, you know, you've got a lot of folks that are willing and able to help them regardless of needs. Second tactic, which is equally important um, and top of mind with much of our customers is safety. You know, a lot of you through your agency partners and the things that you're doing within the dealership have already reacted amazingly to this. Um, you put together good social distancing practices and you're merchandising them out to those key mediums. Um, you've spoken and posted, you know, your health policies, how you're, how often you're cleaning your facilities, what you're doing to keep the customers safe. And you've also put together some plans to accommodate those at-risk folks. Uh, and that's really, really important. You know, tying in there, a lot of those things go into the process piece. Uh, for the last couple of years, our SET digital retailing team has done a phenomenal job slowly integrating the digital retailing pro product process into our uh, general strategies. Many of you have that. If you do, there's no better time than now to talk about those ways of buying uh, and going through the process. There's a good percentage of you that don't have that product yet, though, and that's okay. Uh, in reality, a lot of you still have the majority of those tools at your disposal, meaning, you know, the digital retailing tool has everything rolled into one for ease of use for customers, but those things that are rolled into one are all found on your website, credit applications, schedule service tools, um, car finder pages as inventory potentially you know becomes challenging especially on the used car side you know we need to make sure that we get those things front and center we talk about the value that it has to customer the time savings that they'll have by doing a credit application or a trade evaluation online they can all be very valuable more importantly and most importantly it's just making sure that customers know that you're open you know let them know you know when you're seeing peak um, interest and so if they want to avoid the crowds which many people now have the luxury of doing, they can come in at 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock or 2 o'clock instead of around lunch hours or first thing in the morning when we still see maybe a little bit more traffic to the service lanes. 
other processes, you know, a good majority of our dealerships do have up systems, but there's no better time to consider an up system. You know, the last thing we want our customers to see is a bunch of folks uh, waiting outside on the lot in front of our doors. Um, we want to make sure that it is a friendly environment. And unfortunately, you know, in this climate, sometimes that means removing bodies from, you know, the peripheral of the customer's sight line. And so that's something to consider. Uh, looking at payment options, you know, making things, you know, as, as cleanly as possible. I'll tell you, I was in Japan recently and they have a practice of, you know, not never hand to hand handing things off. You know, if I want to pay with a credit card, I put it in a tray, I set it down and the cashier picks up that tray and, and processes the credit card. Thinking things like that through. Um, many of you have started to talk about pick up and drop off options for sales and service or more specifically for service. Um, you know, some of you have integrated uh, Lyft and Uber rides so folks don't have to wait in the service um, waiting areas for their, their cars to be taken care of. And then other options is, you know, thinking outside of the box. You know, many of you have a robust uh, track programs at your dealership and there's many local restaurants I ordered from one yesterday that typically you know that you can't get delivery from but they they actually are delivering right now um, and so putting some of our Toyota vehicles you know in their fleets for that short period of time that they need it the other messaging is going to be more transactional the things that we need to think about again customers we're seeing right now are a little bit more high funnel than low funnel and that but that's okay you know and they still need experts and so it's really important that I know our salespeople are going to be hungry for opportunities today they need to think value first always bring value the more value that our customers can bring you know showing their expertise on the product showing the expertise and value that the dealership brings is going to be really paramount in the weeks and months ahead as our business starts to increase again. And so keeping that in mind, when we get leads, when we get questions on our phone, it's important that we answer those questions fully, bring them more value than they are expecting, reintroduce some of those video walk arounds and, and some of the training best practices, frequently ask questions that we get in service. Um, video uh, is a phenomenal way to show that face-to-face -face connection, build that face-to-face -face connection without actually having to have them in the dealership. The last thing is, is offers and incentives. You know, customers right now are thinking about their pocketbooks. Obviously, as I film this, potentially 2 million folks around the country have lost their jobs. And so budgeting and figuring out how bills are going to be paid are at the utmost concern for many, many of our customers. So speaking about um, deferred payments and lower APR rates, talking about you know, if we can lower their payment is going to be a valuable piece of knowledge for our customers and maybe make them take action sooner rather than later. Uh, availability potentially could be a concern from an industry perspective. Uh, and so that's something to watch, you know, especially if uh, we see some of our competitors um, get in the news and they think about all these plants that are closing down short term or long term, there's going to be a perception in the market that, you know, they might not have the vehicle that I'm looking for. And so we need to make sure that we talk on those things. Put in front of our customers the key products um, on the service side that they're truly going to get in their car and drive for. Chris Collins did a phenomenal job at our marketing meeting recently talking about the things that really motivates buyers, tires and oil changes. You know, this day and age, it, it might be, you know, AC clean, clean cleanses and details and things like that that are going to be top of mind for them. Um, and so making sure that we're doing that. And then by all means, let's just take care of the basics. Every day, let's make sure we run through our website with a fine tooth comb and look at, make sure that we've got custom photos up there, you know, that we've got pricing on all of our vehicles, that we've, we're, we've got good descriptions on all of our vehicles, that we've got the appropriate specials every day you're still seeing tens twenties hundreds of people to your specials pages and so we've got to give them a reason to buy whether it's offers and incentives for today or evergreen offers that can stay consistent uh, month in and month out as incentives change hopefully this helps um, from a messaging standpoint but you know the next step is definitely to make sure that we're conveying that in all the right places 
Um, to me, and if I've been in your dealership or one of our field folks, you know, I always speak to the key places to communicate are the dealership, your email, and your website. And I say that because those are the places that our customers spend the most time with us. They're able to learn from us the most. And so the checklist is really built around that dealership, email, website, and other. Uh, and we're not, for the sake of time, going to go through all of those things, but let's, let's be proactive. Um, again, it's not okay to check the box and just get a banner on our website. We need it in multiple places. The more places our customers see the message, the more believable, uh, more trusting they're going to be in that message. And so keep in mind, you're not going to obviously deploy whatever safety measures or health messages throughout all these different places, but maybe it's 20% or 30%. Uh, and some things like are on hold messages or you know hang tags on sunday offering them a silent salesperson person option um, posting uh, in our in our bathrooms in in our cafeterias and places like that you know that we're cleaning them hourly you know let's make sure that folks see uh, with their eyes that that stuff is happening but also you know that it's getting checked off um, auto responders and our email signatures potentially need to be changing. You know, in our email signatures, maybe there's a link to, you know, changes in processes or opportunities that the customer now has that they might not be aware of. On the sales side specifically, keep in mind that our customers buy a car every three point whatever years. And so some of the technology alone that we have today that, you know, did not exist three years ago. So making sure that they understand that. A lot of our customers on the sales and service side do need uh, to, to, to work with us. You know, they are due for their Toyota Care service. Um, they are in an equity position. They expressed interest in some fashion, you know, through a phone call or walking into our dealership or, you know, emailing us in the last three to six months and are still in the market and have a need or a want for a vehicle. And so talking to them with a very strategic message um, of all those different things is still very, very important. And then again, from a website perspective, making sure that it's those messages are all the places that a customer engages with. We often focus a lot of our attention on the homepage banner, but in reality, our customers are only on our homepage for six to eight seconds maximum. And so it's really important that if you want the customer to understand things that are changing or knowledge that you know they should know about the product or your dealership or what have you they need to be in the places that they go to on the search and result page and the vehicle detail pages and on the lead forms in the photo streams on some of these vehicle detail pages a pop-up message you know as they get deep into it and more importantly than that building specific content pages out on your website through your digital marketing and, and website providers that you can link through link to with your advertising or your social media strategies or your email blasts or in your signatures. The last step is just some of the auxiliary places that are really important to think about. You know, Google My Business is your number one traffic source to your website. It's the number one place that drives phone calls into your dealership. So if you're changing hours of operation, you got to make sure that that gets pushed through GMB as well as all those other places. Your business listing paces, paces, places, easier said than none. Um, <laughs> you know, social posts on Google. GMB, you know, again, some of it can still be sales related, but also it should be health and safety related as well. Um, there's a question answer section in GMB. A lot of our agencies have done a phenomenal job pre-populating those questions um, and answering those questions on your behalf. Now's the perfect time to add a few more questions that relate to safety in your processes. Um, leverage video. You know, there's a few notes throughout this document that speaks to that. We talked to it earlier, but now is the time to spread that expertise, you know, the processes and changes that are happening visually with both with faces and, you know, hearing the tone of your voice. Um, the last, and Siri pops up, I apologize. Uh, in the last few places um, are some of the other, you know, creative opportunities like search, direct mail, um, display. Again, some of these things might, you know, get paused for the short term, you know, if our sales slow, but they're very, very important. 
you know, the, the biggest key to me outside of the key three places is in social media. Um, we need to make sure that we're pushing those messages out. It might even be worth it to advertise a few messages to our customer base using our customer base custom audience to do so. Um, but more importantly, you know, let's have our leaders, you in the dealership, as well as our employees, share messages that we're open, you know, the processes that have changed, you know, the health and safety concerns that we're answering, you know, through to their friends and their family. The amount of reach that your hundreds of employees have in their communities is unimaginable. It cannot be matched by any medium that you spend your dollars on today. And so leveraging your employees to talk to their friends and family, let them know that they'll pick up cars if they want to test drive or see a new 2020 Highlander that they'll bring them to them, you know, to do and share videos on, you know, some interesting features and benefits of the product, um, to walk through your digital retailing tool or an online credit application and explain the process. All those things can be really valuable and keep you top of mind. One business, you know, is available today as well as one business picks up for tomorrow. This is a long video. This document hopefully is very helpful for you. Again, please, please, please feel free to reach out to your 22 squared rep or indirectly through your district manager if we can assist in any way. Thank you so much for your time.